let's take a look at the uh, last year's pattern okay august 2020 the exam which was there let's take a look at that pattern there were actually seven sections okay and total duration was 1 hour 45 minutes okay and there were seven sections uh, one was numerical computations where eight questions were there numerical reasoning 12 questions were there comprehension 10 questions abstract reasoning 12 questions diagrammatic reasoning 12 questions logical reasoning 12 questions and subjective 2 questions and each of the mcq earns you 5 marks for correct answer and minus 2 for incorrect so negative marking was there and each subjective question carries 10 marks okay so total i think so it came out to be 68 questions let me check out once again okay 12 plus 8 is 20 30 42 42 and 12 is 54 and uh, 12 comes out to be 66 into 68 yes so in total there was 68 questions now in this video this specific video we are going to see four to five uh, five to six questions of the numerical computations section okay so now uh, let's start with the uh, questions the ratio of ages of a and b is 3 is to 5 and that of c and d is 2 is to 5 and that of d and b is 1 is to 2 respectively E is eight years old and the ratio of ages of E and C is four is to five. Find the sum of ages of A and D. Actually, very easy question. A upon B is given. That is three upon five. Then C upon D is given two upon five. D upon B is given one upon two. Okay, and E upon C is given four upon five. But already the age of E is they they have given as eight years. So instead of E, I am going to write eight over here. Four two is are. Age of C comes out to be five two are ten years. Okay, now age of C I'm going to substitute over here as ten years. So what I'm going to get is two into five. Age of D comes out to be twenty five years. Okay, so one part of the question has been done. We have to now find the age of A. Now age of D is twenty five. It is already given. So I'll put the value over here. Age of B is going to be twenty five into two is fifty. Okay, fifty years. Uh, age of b i am going to put over here a upon 50 would be equal to 3 upon 5 so 5 tens are age of a comes out to be 30 years okay and we want a plus d so that is going to be 30 plus 25 that is 55 years is the answer option d urvik brings a certain number of sweets in a box to his class on his birthday he distributed one sweet less than half the number of sweets in the box in the first period Then in the second period he distributed two sweets less than one third of the remaining, and then in the third period he distributes three sweets less than one fourth of the remaining. If there are still thirty six sweets left in the box, what was the initial number of sweets in the box? Okay, now we want to find the initial number of sweets in the box. You can use the options to get the answer. Okay, uh, the answer comes out to be one hundred and twenty four. But if you don't want to waste your time by using the options to find the answer. What is the way of solving the question? Very easy. What is the initial number of sweets in the box? Let it be x. Okay. What happens is that uh, Purvik brings x sweets. Okay. He distributed. Take a look at the first sentence. He distributed one sweet less than half the number of sweets in the box in the first period. Forget about the period. Okay. Half the number of sweets in the box is how much? X by two. Out of that, he Distributed one sweet less, so x by two minus one is what he distributed. Okay, what he distributed. So how much is going to remain? It is going to be x minus x by two minus one. That is going to be x by two plus one. So sort of half plus whatever he has not half plus one. This much remains. Okay. So what I am going to write is how much is remaining? X plus two upon two remains. Fine. Now out of the remaining part, which is there, this part. in the second period he distributed two sweets less than one third okay so now two sweets less than one third so that means say if there are uh, 30 sweets okay one third of this will be what 30 upon 3 is equal to 10 and two less than that so how much are going to remain over here he has distributed 10 minus 2 is 8 how much are going to remain 22 are going to remain that is what two third plus 2 okay One third. Say if he distributes, how much will remain? Two third, and two less than one third. That means two will be more remaining in two by three. Okay. So over here, whatever are the remaining sweets, out of that, two third are going to remain plus two sweets. Okay. How? I'll tell you. X by two plus one are remaining. Out of that, he is distributing say one third. So how much are going to remain? One minus one third. That is two third are going to remain. But he is actually not distributing one third. 
out of one third also two sweets less he is distributing so these two sweets are going to remain so that is the reason i have added it over here okay so these are the sweets remaining after the second period right now comes the last period where he is going to distribute how much he is going to distribute three sweets less than one fourth so if he distributes one fourth remaining portion will be three by four three by four of this part two by three into x by two plus one plus two okay and he actually distributes three sweets less than one fourth so these three sweets are also remaining so plus three and at the end of the day they are saying that still 36 sweets are left in the box so that will be equal to 36 okay so what i'm going to get is three upon four into two by three no need to open the brackets immediately okay you can just write it down like this into this three i'm going to take over here so 36 minus 3 is going to be 33 okay then 3 into 11 is 33 and this 4 i'm going to take on the right hand side so what is going to happen i'm going to get 2 upon 3 into x by 2 plus 1 plus 2 would be equal to 11 into 4 is 44 this 2 i'll take over here so what i'm going to get i'll cancel it out i'll write immediately over here 44 minus 2 is 42 okay then 2 into 21 i'm going to write and 3 into 21 I'll do okay what I'll do is I'll solve it at the top over here right what do I have is x upon 2 plus 1 would be equal to 21 into 3 is 63 again 1 I'm going to subtract x upon 2 is going to be 62 and x is going to be 124 these are the original sweets bought by Purvik to the to, for his birthday in the class now there are other ways also to solve the question okay other way is using the options to your benefit. Now, let us see what that way is. I'll assume that Purvik bought 72 sweets. Out of that, in the first period, what? He distributes one sweet less than half the number of sweets bought. So, what is half of 72? 72 by 2 is what? 36 and minus 1. That means he distributes, D for distributes, okay, 35 sweets. How much sweets remain now? 72 minus 35 we have to do okay uh, so that 75 that comes out to be 37 sweets remain okay 37 sweets remain now out of the remaining sweets he distributes how much he distributes okay after the first period 37 sweets are remaining okay next in the second period he distributed two sweets less than one third of the remaining what is one third of the remaining 37 upon 3 and two sweets less this much he distributes now the problem is 37 is not divisible by uh, what we say is that 3 so what is going to happen over here 37 divided by 3 is going to be 12.33 minus 2 that comes out to be 10.33 sweets he cannot distribute 10.33 sweets okay so 72 cannot be the answer if you try with 124 you are going to get 124 sweets are there initially he distributes one less than half okay 124 divided by 2 is 62 62 minus 1 comes out to be 61 he distributes 61 sweets how many sweets are remaining 63 sweets remain because 61 plus 63 comes out to be 124 okay now out of this remaining he distributes two less than one third okay 63 divided by 3 minus 2 this much he is going to distribute so 63 by 3 is 21 21 minus 2 comes out to be what 19 sweets he distributes okay and how much remain it comes out to be 63 minus 19 that is 44 sweets remain now out of these 44 sweets one fourth three less than one fourth okay less three less than one fourth of 44 so that comes out to be 11 minus 3 that is nothing but uh, actually eight sweets he distributes and how much remain out of 44 44 minus 8 comes out to be 36 plus 36 remain so this is what we want 36 sweets remain in the box so answer is 124 option b in the product of two fractions 11 by 648 and 9 upon 1375 how many zeros are there between the decimal point and the first non-zero digit after the decimal point actually the question is very easy problem is that because of big numbers we feel that it might be really difficult to solve but uh, it is absolutely easy to solve if you pay attention 11 ones are 11 27 11 twos are 22 okay 55 11 fives are 55 9 ones are 9 9 sevens are 63 18 72 so what i get over here is 72 into 125 now you will feel multiplying 72 with 125 is difficult actually it is not what you can do is 
सेवेंटी टू डिवाइड बाई टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाई वन ट्वेंटी फाइव वॉट यू आर गोइंग टू डू इट इज थर्टी सिक्स मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टू फिफ्टी आई रोट सेवेंटी टू एस थर्टी सिक्स इंटू टू ओके एंड आई मल्टीप्लाइड दिस टू विथ वन ट्वेंटी फाइव सो आई गॉट दिस आई डू द सेम थिंग एटीन इंटू फाइव हंड्रेड ओके एटीन इंटू टू टू इंटू टू फिफ्टी फाइव हंड्रेड एटीन फाइव दर इज नाइनटी सो वॉट आई गेट इज वन थाउजेंड वन अपॉन नाइन थाउजेंड so this one upon nine thousand I am going to write like this one upon nine multiplied by one upon one thousand so what I'll get one upon nine into zero point zero zero one okay so now actually I want zero point zero zero one divided by nine which is absolutely easy to do zero point uh, what I'll do is nine one zar zero point zero zar nine nine zero zar nine nine zero zar nine now ten nine one zar nine so first non-zero digit and decimal point how many zeros are there three Option A. A train started at 8 a.m. from station A with the speed of 60 kilometers per hour. After two hours, another train started from station B towards A with the speed of 72 kilometers per hour. The two trains are expected to cross each other at 12:30 p.m. Owing to signal problems arising at 11 a.m., the speed of each of them was reduced by the same quantity, and they crossed each other at 3 p.m. What is the new speed of the train that started from station A? Actually, the question is uh, easy, okay? But yeah, so many parameters are given that we feel that it is difficult. But it is actually very easy if we go step by step, okay? First, we need to understand that both the trains are moving. So, using the concept of relative speed is going to help us a lot. The first thing that you should do is first you should draw a diagram, okay? This is part A, okay? Station A, and this is station B. Now, train starting at 8 a.m. There is a train starting from A. and there is a train starting from b both the trains okay train starting from a starts at 8 am correct and train starting for, from b starts 2 hours afterwards that is 10 am both the trains are scheduled to cross each other at 12:30 pm so uh, let us assume that the trains cross each other at this point at 12:30 pm okay so now from a to this meeting point is say c okay from a to c how much is the distance traveled by the first train okay distance traveled will be what speed multiplied by time So the speed of the first train is 60. Time taken is 8 to 12:30 uh, is like 4.5 hours. So that comes out to be 270 kilometers. Okay. So this is 270 kilometers. Next, from B to C, from 10 to 2:30, the distance traveled will be what? Speed is what? 72 kilometers per hour. Time taken is 2.5 hours. So the distance traveled over here is going to be 180 kilometers. So actually, what is the distance between A and B? This is A and B. I am writing over here. The distance between A and B is going to be 270 plus 180. That comes out to be 450 kilometers. Okay. Now comes the problem at 11 a.m. because speed is going to get reduced at 11 a.m. Now this train starts at 8 a.m. Okay, and it goes up to say 11 a.m. It has gone up to here. Okay. So what is the distance covered in this three hours? Distance covered will be speed is what 60 and three hours. That is 180 kilometers. So it is 180 kilometers. This train has covered the distance and reached over here. The second train started at 10 a.m. and at 11 a.m. immediately there was a problem. Okay, speed had to be reduced because signaling issue was there. So in one hour, distance covered is 72 kilometers per hour. Ah, uh, 72 kilometers because the speed is 72 kilometers per hour. So the second train covers 72 kilometers. Now what is now both the trains are at this point. Okay, and what is the distance between them left? 450 minus 180 minus 72. So I'll do over here. 450 minus 180 minus 72. That comes out to be 198 kilometers. Okay. So only 198 kilometers is left between them. Fine. So I'm going to draw this diagram again over here. 198 kilometers is the distance to be covered between them. This is train from A. This is train from B. And it is 11 a.m. right now. And both of them are moving. Okay. so since both the trains are moving and we have to find out okay the uh, we need to find out over here what is the speed why because they are going to meet at say this point okay at 3 a 3 pm so we know that in 4 hours they are going to meet 11 to 3 pm so since both the trains are moving we are going to use the concept of relative speed time taken would be equal to distance covered upon relative speed or relative speed of both the trains would be what Distance covered upon time taken. Now, since both the trains are moving towards each other, relative speed distance covered will be total 198, and time taken to meet will be 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. because they have given because of signaling issues they meet each other at 3 p.m. So that is going to be four hours. 
So relative speed of both trains comes out to be 49.5 kilometers per hour. Now this relative speed is going to be speed new speed. Okay, after reducing the speed, whatever is there. Okay, new speed of A plus new speed of B. Now why I am adding both the speeds? Because both of them are moving towards each other. That is opposite direction. So in opposite direction, relative speed is always added. So this speed is actually new speed of A plus new speed of B. Okay, addition is there. What is the new speed of A? We know that speed of each of them was reduced by same quantity. So let us assume that redu reduced by x kilometer per hour. Speed of A and B is reduced by x kilometers per hour. So 49.5 will be equal to what? New speed of A will be original was 60 and it was reduced by x. New speed of B is 70, uh, 72 minus x, reduced by x, okay? So what do we get is 49.5 would be equal to 60 plus 72 comes out to be 132 minus 2x, okay? 132 minus 2x, so what do we get over here is 2x will be equal to 132 minus 49.5, right? So 2x is going to be 132 minus 50 is 82 and uh, plus, uh, sorry, 132 minus uh, 50, yes, is 82 and plus 0.5 I have to do, so I am going to get 82.5. Value of x comes out to be 41.25, okay? So every, both the train speed has been reduced by 41.25 kilometer. Reduced by x kilometers per hour, that is by 41.25 kilometers per hour. Now what they are asking is, what is the new speed? Now you might write this as the answer which is wrong, okay? They want the new speed of the train that started at station A. Train that started at station A had the speed 60. It was, now the speed was reduced by 41.25 kilometers per hour. So that comes out to be 60 minus 41.25. That comes out to be 18.75 kilometers per hour. So answer is option A. Answer is 18.75 kilometers per hour. Answer is option A. Raj bought a bag after getting a discount of 15%. He then marks up its price compared to what he bought it for by 8% and gains rupees 367.20. What will be his profit percentage if he increases the price of the bag by rupees 199.8 rupees more than its original price? Now let the original price, okay, original price of bag, assume it to be what? 100 rupees, okay. So let's start with that. Fine. So what will be the cost price for Raj? Raj is going to buy it for rupees 85. Why 85 rupees? Because there is going to be a 15% discount, right? There is going to be a 15% discount on 100 rupees. So cost price for Raj is 85 rupees. Now he marks up the price by 8%. That means he increases the price by 8%. So how much is he increasing? By 8%. So what I have is 8% of 85 rupees. That is the cost price. So what it is going to be 8 upon 100 into 85, right? 4 2s are 4 into 25, 5 5s are 5 into 17. So what I get is 34 upon 5 rupees. So he is actually increasing the price by 34 by 5 rupees over cost price. If he is increasing this much price, that means this must be the profit for him. Okay, because say if you buy a thing for 100 rupees and if you are increasing its price by 20%, that means we are increasing the price by 20 rupees. So selling price becomes what? 120, correct? So over here, cost price is 100. This is nothing but the profit. So over here, cost price is 85. He is increasing the price by 8%. That is 34 by 5 rupees. So this becomes profit in rupees. So when his original price is 100 rupees, his profit comes out to be 34 upon 5 rupees. Okay. What is his original price when the profit is rupees 367.20 rupees? Already they have given by increasing the price by 8%, he gains this much 367.20 rupees. Okay. So when his original price is 100, this much is the profit. Okay. But when this much is the profit 367.20, how much is the original price? Just cross multiply. Okay. What you are going to get over here is I'll uh, write over here 367.20 multiplied by 100 divided by 34 upon 5. Okay. Would be equal to question mark. So this question mark will be equal to 36720 multiplied by 5 divided by 34. Okay. On solving, if you try to solve this, you are going to get the value as 5400. 
this is going to be the original price of the bag so now we know the original price of the bag okay so i'll write over here original price i have already found out original price of bag is 5400 rupees okay 5400 rupees now what is given what will be his profit percentage if he increases the price of the bag by 199.8 okay 199.8 so now what happens is what is his selling price for the bag 5400 is the original price 199.8 more than original price so plus 199.8 rupees so the selling price for him comes out to be 5000 uh, okay this comes out to be 5599.8 rupees okay this comes out to be his selling price okay so uh, once again i'll just check the calculations 5400 plus 199 okay 0.8 comes out to be 5,599.8 rupees. Okay, this is the selling price. What we want is profit percentage. What is the formula for profit percentage? I know selling price. Do I know cost price? Now I'm going to tell you what is the cost prices for Raj. This is the original price of the bag. So, the cost price will be what? On this original price, Raj gets 15% discount. So, cost price will be 85% of 5400. Okay. So, that comes out to be 85 upon 100 multiplied by 5400. So, these two zeros get cancelled out. And what we have over here is 85 multiplied by 54. That comes out to be 4590 rupees. This is the cost price for Raj. Okay. So, what is the percentage profit? It is going to be profit in rupees. Profit in rupees is calculated by selling price minus the cost price upon cost price multiplied by 100. Okay. So, uh, percentage profit will be what? What is selling price? 5599.8. Okay. Minus 4590. So, this is going to be 5599.8 minus that is going to be 1009.8 rupees divided by the cost price is 4590 multiplied by 100. So, you cancel this out. Okay. So, what you get is 10098 divided by 459. Okay. So, if you uh, observe carefully 450. Okay. If you try to divide 459 into 2, you actually get this as 22%. Okay. This exactly you get as 22%. Fine. So, answer over here is option A 22%.